Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Mr. Garcia. So today we're going to start working already on the lessons on statistics. Okay. So even though I'm still not yet your official teacher, uh, um, the sub there will come. Um, they will come sometime, hopefully this week. Okay. And um, for now, I'll take control of your Schoology class and put in all the scores that you did for uh, last week. Okay. So today we're going to discuss chapter one. Okay. So if you need to take notes, take notes. But what I'm going to do is to try to put this uh, PowerPoint onto Schoology once I get access to the classes. Okay. So let's start. Okay, so what we're going to do is to discuss today, okay, an overview of statistics. Okay, so we already learned a bit of what statistics is, but we're going to start off with some of the important definitions and some important terms that you were going to use. So we're going to start with uh, section 1.1, which is the overview of statistics. Okay. So for this, we're going to start with our objectives. So our objectives is we're going to define what statistics is, which I think we already done in the beginning. And today we're focusing on distinguishing uh, between a population and a sample. And at the same time, also between a parameter and a statistic okay so remember when we did the the activity on last friday we have like a sample statistic that we use which is the mean okay and so we're going to define today what statistic is okay and the last one okay uh is to distinguish between what descriptive statistics is and inferential is statistics. These are the type of statistics that we're going to learn. Okay. Now, continuing on. Okay. As I said earlier, before last week, okay, um, statistics boils, about, boils down about what data is. Okay. So, by definition, okay, data consists of information okay, that can be gathered coming from observations, counts, measurements, or responses. Okay? Now, let's look at the examples right here, and let's determine from where did we get them from. Okay? Let's say, for example, people who eat three daily servings of whole grains have been shown to reduce their risk of stroke by 37%. Okay. Now, how did we get, how, how did from here, how did they get the data from? Okay. Did they get it from account? Did they get it from observation? Did they measure it or was it a responses? Okay. So, in order for him to get the 37% straw risk, okay, the reduction of risk, this is easily uh, can be construed as a coming from observations, okay? So if they basically observe people eating three daily servings, and then from here, it was shown to reduce their risk of stroke by 37%. Okay, next example, okay? 70% of 1,500 U.S. spinal cord injuries to minors result from vehicle accidents, and 68% were not wearing a seatbelt, okay? So, to get these numbers, the data is the 70% and the 68%, these were obtained from basically what? Counting, okay? So, that's why... This now determines exactly the number or the percentage of those who were not wearing a seatbelt. Okay. So 
clear so far? Are we good? Okay. So from here, going on to the next. So we already know statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, analyzing, interpreting data in order to make decisions. So we already learned this. Okay. Now, again, so we'll now proceed with data sets. Okay. So for data sets, okay, when we get our data, we get it usually from the population. Okay, so collection of all outcomes, responses, measurements, or counts that are of what? Interest, okay? However, in some cases, it's really, really kind of hard to use the entire population, okay? For example, now suppose I wanted to determine um, the opinions of all uh u.s drivers okay about drunk driving okay so if i wanted to determine the opinion of all u.s drivers the population would now be what all the people who drive and who live in the united states okay that is really really a lot okay if i'm gonna do that there are gonna be a lot of problems first of all it's time consuming to do that, okay? I have to go to different states, gather some data. And at the same time, it will be very costly, okay? We have to use a lot of money to do just simple research like that, okay? So what statisticians do is to basically use a sample. That's why we have a sample here that states that it's a subset or a part of the population, okay? However, it's also important that the sample that we get is a good representative, okay? Because whatever we calculate or whatever things that we work on the sample has to reflect what the population is, okay? We're going to learn more of that in the coming weeks. Okay, let's have an example, okay? In a recent survey... 1,500 adults in the United States were asked if they thought there was solid evidence for global warming. 850 of the adults said yes. Okay, identify the population and a sample and describe the data set. Okay, so notice this is a survey. Okay, and the survey. Okay, was administered to what? 1,500 adults. Okay, so since this one is uh, a survey, okay, it's kind of hard to survey all the adults in the United States, right? That's going to be your population, the set of all adults in the United States. Okay, all the adults. So that's going to give me this one all the adults, and then 1,500 of that, okay, that represents your what? Sample, okay? But the question is, what is this 855 of the adults said who said yes? Okay, this was the result of the survey. So basically, out of the 1,500, this turns out to be your what? Data set, okay? Clear so far? Okay. Let's see what the answers they sell us. Or what's the answer that they tell us? Okay. So from here, okay. Let's now um, go over, okay. The answer, uh, the next screen. Okay. Let me see. Uh, if I can, okay, so, so as you can see, this is the solution. The population consists of all responses of all adults in the United States, okay? So, the sample consists of what? The 1,500 adults that participated in the survey, okay? Which means it's kind of like be the sample, the sample, which is the subset of all 
the adults in the United States. Now, the result, okay, tells us that uh, 855 said yes, and most definitely the other one, which is 645, said no, okay? Do you guys understand this? Okay. And then now we're going to go on to the next one, okay? Which is parameter and statistic, okay? So basically a parameter by definition, as you can see, is a numerical description of a population, okay? Characteristic, okay? While the statistic is a numerical description of a sample characteristic, okay? So this means that if the number came in, the number description came in from a population, that's a parameter. That's why they always go together. Population parameter, and then if the sample, the number comes from a sample, then we call it a statistic. That's why we call it sample statistic, okay? Let's have an example, okay? Decide whether the numerical value describes a population parameter or a sample statistic, okay? So let's look at the example here. A recent survey of a sample of college career centers reported that the average starting salary for petroleum engineering majors is 83000 one hundred and twenty one dollars okay so basically okay it's a sample statistic okay why okay this one this number that you see in here came from a what sample okay so that's the reason why it's called a sample statistic okay so this value, which is the average, this average came in from the sample, okay? Okay, let's have another one. Decide whether the numerical value describes a population parameter or a sample statistic, okay? So the 2,182 students who accepted admission offers to Northwestern University in 2009 have an average SAT score of 1,442, okay? Now let's determine, okay? This 2,182, these are all, okay, all students who what? accepted admission offers okay so this is not like a sample you're talking about these are all the students who accepted who said yes to that who said yes going to northwestern university okay now the one hundred the 1442 here that you see describes this number of students so since this one describes the whole 2182 all of them 2182 represents the population okay so which means the average sat scores came from all the students which implies that this again is a what this again is a population parameter Okay, is that clear? Okay, so you know already the difference between a parameter and a statistics, okay? Now, let's go to the different branches of statistics, okay? So the first one is what you call descriptive statistics, okay? Which is the first portion that we're gonna be doing for stats. So it involves organizing, summarizing, and displaying data, okay? So we're gonna learn how to calculate, do charts, create tables, okay? And a lot more, okay? And then towards the end, we're gonna be working on 
inferential statistics, okay? Involves using sample data to draw conclusions about a population. Actually, you already had a taste of inferential statistics when we discuss Martin's case against the company, about him suing the company about age discrimination, okay? We gather data, okay? We perform a little bit of stats, and then we came up with a conclusion, okay? What we did, that was inferential statistics, okay? Let's have an example here, okay? Now, decide which part of the studies represent descriptive branch of statistics, and then what conclusions might be drawn from the study using inferential statistics. Okay, so this is the study. Okay, so a large sample of men age 48 was studied for 18 years. Okay, for unmarried men, approximately 70% were alive at the age 65. For married men, 90% were alive at age 65. So as you can see, there's a graph on the, on the right side, bar graph, explaining this, okay? So what we're gonna do is which one here is descriptive and then what conclusion can we make from this study using inferential statistic, okay? So basing from here, the one that basically describes the research is what? This portion right here, okay? For unmarried men, approximately what? 70% were alive at age 65. That's a descriptive, okay? And another one is what? For married men, 90% were what? Alive at age 65. So these are basically describing the study, okay? So this is the part of the study that describes, that uses the descriptive branch of statistics, okay? Now, okay, Based from this, let's create this one, okay? Based from this, what can you conclude, okay? Now you know that 70% uh, were alive for unmarried men at age 65. And if you're uh, for married men, it's 90%, okay? So what does this mean, okay? So what inferences can you make? That's why it's called inferential. So in this case, this means that if you are married, Okay, if you're married, you're more likely to what? Live longer. That's what it means. Okay, so there you go. For unmarried men, approximately 70% were alive. And for married men, 90% were alive at 65. So a possible inference is that being married is associated with longer life for men. Okay, so again, you always answer in complete sentences. Okay. So, now this ends our lesson for today, okay? So today what we're gonna do is, we already defined statistics, we learned already a population, we can distinguish a population from a sample, distinguish a parameter and a statistic, and distinguish between descriptive and inferential statistics, okay? So today what you're gonna do is, okay, you're gonna do the classwork on lesson for the section 1.1, okay? So again, um, you're gonna do this and then once you finish, you can just turn it in. I'll record them and put them in Schoology, okay? So we'll have another one of